Today we start a curious kit from U Gears called the Mono Wheel. It looks like some futuristic contraption from a 1950s newsreel. As complicated as it appears, the kit only has four wood sheets, so it won't take too long to build. As usual, it's rubber band powered, and there are three different types of rubber bands. To start, punch out two large rings and a dozen small connectors. Insert the connectors around the edge of the larger ring. Then attach the smaller ring to the connectors. Work your way around the ring to get all of them in. It's at this point Ed noticed the punch outs in the larger ring. Better late than never. Next, punch out a lever piece, a small ring, and a T-shaped piece. Place the ring inside the lever and use the T-shaped piece to attach them onto the center of the large ring. Ed messed up the orientation of the lever. He'll fix it later. Now to make the first gear. The axle is made of two pieces. Two large cogs are positioned toward the center. Three smaller rings are inserted on each side to complete the gear. Place the gear in the hole toward the top of the large ring near the ratchet lever. Put a sawtooth piece over the axle on the other side, then add a small ring. The lever is still wrong. On to the second gear. The first phase uses an axle made of two pieces and a series of six rings to form the center. The rings have a mark that should be aligned. It takes some effort to position the rings. Next, insert six larger rings over the previous assembly. The two largest rings go on the ends. Then add four connectors to keep the whole thing together. Finally, add three more rings on each side to finish the assembly. Two large ones first, and then two smaller ones on the axle. Make sure the finished assembly turns easily. Add this gear to the hole on the left of the large ring. It should be connected on the other side with a teardrop piece that interacts with the ratchet lever. Now, make a small assembly with a rectangular piece and two more teardrops. Make sure the orientation is correct. Ed got this wrong. Place this over the axle of the new gear. Next, take a thin rubber band, cut a length, and tie it so it is 10 centimeters in length, unstretched. Ed found it hard to create the right sized loop, so he cut a large length and pulled the loop smaller and smaller until it was the right size. Lots of waste, but it worked. Attach the loop to the hook on the bottom of the correctly placed ratchet lever. Finally, stretch the rubber band through a piece with two notches and press the piece into a slot in the large ring. This may take a few tries. The ratchet lever should now snap back when you pull it up. The third gear is really two gears that are mirror images. Use a T-shaped piece to assemble a small cog, a curvy piece with a small ring, a larger cog, and a final small ring. Assemble the second set the same way, but flip the curvy piece around 
which Ed didn't do. So Ed reassembled one the other way. The two small gears are connected together using two rectangular pieces. This assembly goes into a hole on the right of the large ring. It will fit loosely for now. Next, connect two pieces that look like grill work on a car. Then, add them to the front of the large ring. Now, insert a tab from the third gear into a slot in the grill work. Make sure the gears mesh and turn easily. Lake and Eighth showed up while Ed was preparing for the next gear. I think he was trying to help, but it's hard to tell. No, I don't think he's helping. Time to go. Two pieces are slotted together to make the axle for the fourth gear. Two large cogs are added to the center. Oops, the teeth don't match up. Easily fixed. Next, two discs are added to each side of the gear. Then a cog is added. And finally, a smaller ring. This gear is inserted in the hole on the lower left of the large ring, hanging loosely. Now, attach a rectangular piece toward the edge of the large ring. Check the gears again. For the final smaller gear, move two cogs to the center of the axle. Then add one ring on each side of the cogs. Finally, add two rings on each side near the ends of the axle. This piece goes on the bottom left of the large ring and is held in place by a ring through the axle on the other side. That's quite a lot of work done. We'll stop here. Next time, we'll add the other side and get an idea of how the monowheel is supposed to work. See you then!